So we're unmuted now. Hello, everyone. Oh, did you want it like that? Uh, yes. As long as students can see. Yeah, that should be fine. The screen. Hello. Cool. So yeah, double check everyone can hear you. Static notifications. Um, can students online hear me? You gotta keep that close. And just okay, you hear me from the back. Okay, cool, great. Um, yeah, so welcome, <laughs> welcome to my first in-person lecture for Cup One Five Three One. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited to be here. I've been waiting for this day for so long. So, yeah, <laughs> and. Um, I'm really grateful for the can your kind word from yesterday's online lecture. Really give me a lot of confidence. Um, um, yeah, so what are we going to talk about today? So today we are talking uh, a little bit more about crackness. So uh, in the lecture we had before, uh, let me try to open WebCMS. And here is the list of our uh, lectures. So, oops, it's here. Okay, so we are now at here, crackness. So we are going to, is it too small? What about now? Okay, cool. So we talked about dynamic verification before. So if you remember, uh, during that lecture, we talked about how uh, we do the testing, like, uh, black, box te black box testing, like we test if the output uh, is what we have expected to have. So we run the code um, and we test the output. So that is uh, what we had uh, talked about in that lecture, the dynamic verification. And today uh, we are talking a little bit more, um, which is more about static verification. Okay, so um, yeah, just a, a very brief overview. Uh, like, I hope you can understand like what we are going to talk about today. So now let's go to some more details. So first of all, static verification. Um, yeah, so in the dynamic verification, uh, we run that code. However, um, it is good though. Like, we can know whether the program, all the code is working as what we wanted to. Um, however, there might be some risk, and the most important risk here we are talking about is the um, safety. So what if um, the code uh, is not getting any errors, okay, it's not having any output, or um, it's using our memory um, when it's running that code. So we might want to have some testing before we even run that code. So this is why uh, we need to have some static verification, like we test the code uh, before we run it. Okay, so this is static uh, verification. So more, speci uh, more specifically, we will talk about type safety and type script, and we are going to see some examples. Um, yeah, so uh, when we learn about JavaScript, like the same type of JavaScript, we, uh, you may have noticed that JavaScript do not have type, right? So we do not declare the type, and the code um, infer the type when there's um, the content or the info given to the parameter or whatever, the key, um, something. So just no type in JavaScript. So how can we make sure we have type safety in JavaScript, okay? So this is the background. Um, so let's have a look at this code here. Um, does it look nice to you? Yes? <laughs> Just at first glance, does it look nice? It looks nice to me, like when I first uh, before I look into the details, like what I think what it's doing is uh, 
we have a string and we repeat that string for repeat times. So this is what I'm thinking like this code is working. Um, let's have a try. Oh. The, the camera is not on you. Sorry. Oh. You get in the picture? I get in the picture. There we go. <laughs> Should we get in? Cool. Okay, um, where's my code? Oh, it's here. Three point two. Sorry, where's my code? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I will create a new folder. Um, not this one. Okay. Never mind. Um. Yep. Here it is. So here I have a, I have a uh, code looks like this, which is exactly what we had in the slide. Uh, just make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> okay. So now let's tr run this code. Uh, this is what we had. Oops, it's my code JS. I'll create a new one from our slide and I'll make sure it's the same as what we have here. Okay, so here I have a JavaScript code and it looks like this. Let's try to run it and see what happens. Let's go to uh, week three, two. Okay, so I have my code here. So when I node three dot three, my code broken. Oh, it's JS. Oh, just my code dot JS. We got nothing. Zero? What do you Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it doesn't work well, so it doesn't make sense because um, repeat here, like you can't compare I, like if it's smaller than hello, right? So it doesn't make sense. So yes, you notice what is wrong with this code. So we accidentally, uh, so in this function, we need to have repeat first, which needs to be uh, integer. However, we put hello, which should be after uh, here, put it here. So let's have a try again, which should be, looks like this. This is what it should be like. However, JavaScript cannot uh, figure out this problem for us. Okay, so this is actually what it, we have expected. So hello, 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 hello for five times, right? Okay, so sometimes we can get unexpected inputs. Oh, it's wrong, right? So this program prints out nothing. So this is actually a kind of worst mistake that a program makes um, because it doesn't give us an error message. Right. So static verification is a kind of analysis that before uh, we run this code, it gives us some information like perhaps there's something wrong. Okay, so this is why we introduced some uh, testing. So this is actually uh, dynamic testing. So we add some extra code to check if the input is in proper tag. 
you can see that we have uh, we check if the repeat is of uh, tab number and we check if the string here is of tab string. So this is only give us the error message when we've run it. So it, it is dynamic verification. But we want to know this information before we even run it for tab safety. So what tab safety it actually does is preventing this uh, matches between the actual and expected type of variables. Like what we had a mistake in the example we have seen. Okay. And C is tab safe because we need to declare the type in C, right? When we learn that from 1511. However, in JavaScript, we do not declare that. So JavaScript is not tab safety. So in another word. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, it depends on what you mean as a user in web services or when you as a programmer, a developer, when you are coding. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's a issue, a problem in JavaScript because it cannot um, make sure that you are using the tab of your variables consistently. So the solution we saw previously is uh, dynamic in, um, verification that we catch the issues at runtime. Okay, so we need a way to check for correct tab um, statically in JavaScript. Yay, tab script. <laughs> so this is why we introduced tab script. It's a very, very, very great language. And it's very easy to learn, especially now you have learned JavaScript. It's very, very similar. It just adds some additional thing to JavaScript. Okay, And um, I'm also teaching some second year and third year uh, software engineering courses. And we give the students the freedom to choose the language they want to use in their projects. And many students choose TypeScript. So you can know how popular it is and how easy it is to use. Okay, um, as I mentioned before, like TypeScript is a language that built on top of JavaScript. Its job is to check the tabs in your program. It helps you check your tabs. You do not need to have some code in your uh, in your program and check uh, the tab dynamically. Um, it, what it actually does is it check your tabs and then transfer it into JavaScript and Node.js, uh, use Node.js to run that JavaScript. So this is actually what it does. Okay, just some extra uh, checking on top of JavaScript. So it's very easy to learn. Okay, so now we have a, uh, this example here. So this is a TypeScript uh, example. Um, but how do we run that? Do we still Node and 3.3 micro.ts? Can we do that? Have a guess. <laughs> and the answer is no, we can't <laughs> just know. Uh, Node is for JavaScript. Okay, so TypeScript is another dependency that we need to install. Let's have a look at here. Um, so here's, it's actually a package that we can download from NPM. So if I uh, tap script search, yes, it's here. Tap script. So it's actually a package that we download, um, we install from NPM. Uh, how's the students online going like? Um, before I move on, uh, any questions? All good. Um, for this, only for students online, that we have a wonderful admin uh, for the chat online. So Tan uh, is online, is our course admin. He will answer your questions uh, for the chat online. Okay, so I will focus on you here. So this is how we uh, install TypeScript. So let's have a try. Um, 
what I'm going to do is okay so here's an empty project that I created so um, so let's start from scratch so that you can if you have a laptop at hand you can also uh, do this together with me so it's three dot three so this is an empty folder empty project so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, have an npm package oops and package name version description entry point test command git, git author yes okay cool now I have a uh, create a um, uh, npm project here is empty there's nothing now I'm going to <laughs> install this um, tab script dependency so I copy this code from the slide and install it can you see the code uh, from the back? Can you see the code from the projector from the back? Do you want me to make it a little bit bigger? Okay, bigger? Yes, okay, sure. Okay, so this is how we install um, tab script. So let's go back to the slide. After we have installed the tab script, we can run uh, no, with JavaScript. So this is how we run it. So we have uh, ts uh, dash node, and this is my code. So I need to have this code in my project. Okay. So I'm going to. It's called three dot three. My code. Rename and it's uh, TS, it's tab script. Right? So I copy and paste the code here. Okay, great. So, how we run that? So we can run from terminal here and this is how we run that. Okay. Oh, <laughs> error message. Yes, um, the name in the file, three dot three, my code. Okay, so um, the reason that we can't j just not uh, end the code is because it's a dependency that we install. It's not um, an actual um, like program that we can call directly as we used to do with JavaScript. So it's like what we did before with uh, JS test. So it's a library that we call from here. Okay, so this is why we call it like this. Okay. Let me. Oops. Sorry. Let me make it properly. Okay. So let's run it here. Week three dot two. Okay, so let's run that code again. Yeah, so this is what is expected to get uh, from this code. 
Okay, so this is how we run uh, tab script code. Okay, so um, so you may notice that it's a little bit complex to. Um, so what we actually doing here that when we run this command is we are still running that code. So we are not checking the code before we even run it. As you can see that we see an output, right? So this is what we get from the output. So we already got some here. So we already run that code. So what if we want to check that code before we even run it? Okay, so this, uh, so we need to do something else. It's called, uh, it's very similar. It's called TSC. It's tab script compiler, the shortcut. So this is how we do that. So if there's no error message, meaning that this static uh, verification has passed. So there's no error uh, when we check that. So what if we make it Oops, this is not the code. Here, okay. A lot of drama, right? So I copy and paste this code here. So this is my code. So what we want to do is we want to run this code, right? So, um, it's in JS, it's not in TS. I have too many folders open here. Okay. Uh, let, let us try again. Yeah, it's output array. So here's a more uh, simple example here. So we just want to get the sum of one and two. And this is what we get. Okay, it's array. Okay. So what if we have some error? So I should have a number input here for the sum function. So what if I accidentally have a string? So I have an A here. So what will happen? So when I run from the terminal, yeah, here's the error message. Okay, so this is when I run this script, but I still run that. So I want to get this error, uh, error message before I run that. So I use TSC instead. Yeah, give me this error message, right? It shows that the argument of tab string is not assignable to parameter of tab number. Right, so they test uh, this code uh, for the tabs before they run it. Yep. Good question. Yes, we do have some shortcut, but it's not just TSC, but we can do that. Uh, similarly, um, let's have a look here. So what we can do is in this package.json file, yeah, remember that we did similar things for just testing before. So we can some, have something like TSC in the script here. Okay, so we can have TSC, um, and this will run this TSC uh, script in this uh, package in my uh, NPM project. Okay, so let's have a try, like how this works. So we, so this is what we used to have, right? TS dash node and this code file, so this tab script file. Okay, so instead we can have, uh, we can remove this long lines here. So we can have npm run ts node. Okay, so this is what we can have. So let's have a try. Yeah, there's the error message because I have a string here. So I shouldn't have that. So similarly, we can also add another one which is called uh, tsc. We just run this TS, TS node, so we also have TSC. So let's have a try how it works in here. So uh, let me remove this TS node and change it to TSC. And npm run TSC, and this is my tab script file. Yeah, the error message. So it's actually doing the same, but I kind of have a shortcut, make it easier uh, to run. 
Okay, cool, great. Um, yeah, let's move on. Yeah, we have installed that. We have run the code. Okay, so we have uh, in the slide, you might be a little bit confused, like why we have no implicit any here. So I will get back to this later when uh, we get to the tabs uh, in tab scripts. Okay, so that you can get clear like why we have it here, but just ignore that. So TS node does, not, uh, does some tab checking as we have seen, but it also runs that code. To just recap, and it's useful to have a way just tap check uh, without running. So that is why we have TSC uh, before we run the TS node. But we can also have another look uh, here, like how it actually works here. Okay, can you see clearly my terminal? Okay, so let's have a try. Um, this is what we have, uh, like we test the code before we run that. So we can also like after we uh, check the tab and then we run that code with node. Interesting, right? So this is what actually tab script does. So this is a theoretical thing. You do not need to worry about that. I'm just showing you what tab script is doing at the back. Okay, so we can note uh, 3.3, .3, uh, my code, and interestingly here, it's not TS, it's not .ts, it's .js. So it's actually creating a JavaScript file for you. It's trans transforming that tab script file into JavaScript file and use Node to run that JavaScript file. So this is actually what's happening at the back. So let's have a try. Yeah, found the error message, right? It even gives you an output which does not make sense, <laughs> right? But it, it at least tell you that here you have an error, okay? But this is what is actually run at the back. But you don't need to worry about that. You just um, npm run uh, ps node and the file, the tab script file. What's that? So scary. Okay, so cool. So we have already add uh, this in our package JSON file, right? So I have shown you here so that we can npm um, run ts node and npm run tsc. Okay, so you can also do that. You can add that to your package JSON file. So now. <coughs> Let's try something else. Um, let's try to use TSC on program that has tap arrows in it. Okay, so this is uh, the example that we have seen at the beginning. So let's run that uh, with uh, the uh, npm run TSC and see how it looks like. So, okay, so I'm Changing this code to like something looks like this. I should have number first and the string later. However, I make it uh, wrong here. Just to look what error message we get. Uh, TS node. npm run TS node and this uh, tab script file. Oh, error message, right? Because we had it wrong. So it tells us that the argument of tab string is not assignable to parameter of tab number. Another example to demonstrate to you how it works. Okay. So let's have another look at the syntax of tab script. So it's very, very, very similar to JavaScript. Only one additional thing is here, like we have it a tab. We have a number as the type of A. So number here is very similar to what you are familiar with, like integer or double, um, that kind of thing, that kind of type. Okay, so in addition to number, we also have uh, string and boolean. So these are only three commonly used tabs for tab script. So it's not that complicated, right? Um, we can also 
Uh, let's have a look at more examples here. So tab three doesn't really require you to have a tab for all the variables. Okay. Um, so here, for example, this first example, uh, we have a string tab assigned to this name parameter, but in this second example, we didn't. Right, so it's a lot in tab three. So you can assign it, uh, you can declare the type when um, you find it necessary, but you can also uh, do not declare the type. However, um, here in this second example, you already this name had a value, which is Hayden. It knows that it's a string in tab three. It's very clever. However, in the first example, there's nothing assigned to name. So if you do not have the string tabs here, it will show you an error message. Let's have a look. So I'm going to get rid of that. And let's uh, run this code again. Oops, there's no error message. The reason being that, um, oh, I didn't remove this string, so that's why. So what if I do not declare a tab for it? Yes, this is what I was expected. So the parameter name implicitly has an any tab. Okay, so this is, you might not understand what is an any tab, but we'll go deeper into it in your um, very soon. But you should know that for now that um, sometimes it's a lot to have no tab, but sometimes it doesn't. Yep. So uh, it depends, like for example, in this second example, oops, it's not this. Here, it, or, this name uh, already is assigned with a value. So that is clear that what is the type for this name variable? So that it's okay that we do not declare that type. But for this first example, we cannot know that it's no value assigned to this name. So that we need to declare the type for type script. Good. Cool. Um, okay, so now we are going to have a look at more examples of how tab screen, uh, tab script looks like. So there are only three uh, basic tabs in tab script, which are string, number, and boolean. Um, and sometimes we even allow functions to accept multiple of these. We'll see example, no stress, okay. And also uh, we are going to see quite a lot of examples and a lot of uh, code, like how tab script work. You do not need to stress about that. Okay, so these are just um, very interesting examples. Okay, so in this course, we only touch the very basic things about tab script, but it's very useful for you to learn tab script. Okay, it's a very strong um, language. <clears throat> okay, so let's have a look at this very first one. I'm going to put that into my code again. And I run it. Yep, nothing because I didn't console log anything. So it makes sense, right? So this is something uh, additional we have seen here. So we also assigned a tab to the out output, right? So this is how we assign the tab, uh, declare the tab of output. It's very similar to C, is it? <laughs> and this is uh, we return hello name. So we can. Uh, have another try, console log uh, hello. Uh, what we give it, uh, we need to give it a string, right? Because uh, the name is declared uh, UTL. Does it work? Yay, hello UTL. <laughs> so this is how it looks like. Um, but we, if we accidentally make something wrong here, so if I have number here, okay, I, when I check uh, using TSC, it will remind us 
the tab string is not assembled to tab uh, number, right? Because this returns a string, right? Not number. So this is why uh, tab strip is very useful. It helps us check the tab uh, if there's any error. Okay. So this is the very first example. It's very straightforward. And here's union. Let's uh, have this code. Okay, so uh, you might notice something interesting here. What does it mean that ready is declared with two different tabs, both boolean and number? It means that um, ready can either be boolean or number. So it accepts two different tabs. You can have even more. So you can have, for example, string. Okay, so it's also a lot. Okay, so this is. Um, how strong tab strip can be. Okay, so uh, we can then see check uh, if it's print ready. So this example is just to show you that uh, in tab strip we can have multiple tabs a lot for one variable. Okay, so this is what we call union. List another interesting example. Okay, so let's run this first and see. Um, create console log, and I create ten list with um, a. What about a? It needs to be a string or number. So this is similar. So here is similar to the previous example that item can either be string or number. Right. So let's have a try uh, to run this code first, and I will explain. Okay. Oops, we got nothing. The reason is that it's TSC, it's not uh, TS node. Cool. This is what we got. We got a list. Right. It's an array. Array. Okay. So this is how it looks like. So we uh, declare the type of it as an array, and it can be either string or number. So let's have another example. What if it's zero? It's a number. A list of zeros. Right? Any questions? Yep. Number and strings, so both. So this actually means item can be both strings or number. So either string or number is accepted for this variable atom. So this is actually. Dictionary? Oh, a string linked to a number. Um, yeah, I should be able to, um, but you need to, like, what, is it what it mean that you add uh, zero and then a, zero and a, zero and a? Sorry, I can't hear you. Name and age? Oh, good question. We are going to see that example very soon. <laughs> cool. Okay, cool. So um, this is we can declare a new tab. So for example, before we had uh, this item can be either string or number, right? So we can declare a new tab. It's called list item. So that we can use this tab later when I uh, you declare a parameter later. So we define a new tab. It can. Um, so for example, here. Okay, so let's run that. Nothing, no error, which is good. Um, yeah, so 
This is exactly the same as the previous example, if you have noticed that. It just defined as a new type it called list item. So it simplifies things. If you use this type again and again in your code, you do not need to have string uh, number uh, every time. You just use list item. Okay. Okay, so um, one more example here. So this is the, you, what do you ask, like name and age example. Let's have a look. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, so the reason that, so this example is going to show you optional uh, inputs from a, an, um, function, from a function. Okay, so here what we want uh, is, for example, uh, the inputs here, the parameters here, include string, start, and end. So for, oh, this is not the age, this is uh, the next one. So this is the optional one, so it demonstrated, uh, you can have optional parameters or optional inputs here. So for example, uh, we have a string hidden. <laughs> Let me change that to each child. Each child. Okay, so this is the, the string I have, it's Y-U-C-H-A-O. So what if I want the first three uh, letters or characters from this string? So we can have uh, start from zero and the first three. Okay, so I want to get that. And what if uh, I only want to start from the second one, not second, the third one. So the index to from here to the end. So I do not want to declare like which, uh, which one I want to end, or like when I want to end. I just want to uh, say like I want to start from index two. Okay. So here's my terminal. Yeah, so this is what it gives us. There's no error message, even though for the first example, I have three parameters, and in the second one, we only have two, because the reason is that the third one is optional. Okay, so this is also very strong with tab scripts. It's flexible. So the third one is optional, because we have this question, uh, question mark here. But you need at least to have two, because these two, the first two, are not optional. Yeah. So we only have one argument for one input. Uh-huh. Um, could that be optional? Or could it have to be more than one input? Like if I need to spend one thing in, and then that's more than one input. Yes, uh, we can also make the second one optional. For example, I can have it looks like that. that. Oh, I can't, for this example, I can't, because I will be using this uh, in this uh, code here. But if, um, so the reason is that the third one can be optional, optional in, this, in this one, is I can use either end or string length as the, uh, to define this modified end, okay? But I do need to use the value of start in this code. However, if it's optional for me to use the value of starting this code, I can also make the second one optional. Right? Cool. Yep. Uh, I think it's what is the value of end? End. Yeah, so I think it's end. No, there's no value of end. Just, just nothing, because you can have either end or string length. So the, if there's no end, you can use the string length value assigned to modified end. I assume that is the, uh, the value of n will be now here, but we can check, uh, we can do a test and see how it is. Okay. Um, yeah, good question. So, for this one, uh, for the first example, we do have uh, three, uh, value three for the end, uh, as the value of end. 
and they choose the value of n instead of the string length. Right. Um, I'm not pretty sure about that. Yeah, but I'm guessing um, it choose the first one. Um, yeah. We can have a try now. Okay. So I my understanding is the same with you, but we can confirm that. So what we are going to do is I'm going to switch them. And see how it works. Do you think it will it will work? <laughs> Oops, error message, which is great. Okay, so let's come back to this later. Okay, so let's have a look at. So the key here is that the it can be optional. Okay, so the key for this example is that it can have optional. So the next one is object. So this is the name, age, and hat one. So it's similar to uh, JavaScript, right? So we have objects in JavaScript. And we can also declare a tab. Uh, looks very similar to object in JavaScript. But um, here, the keys here can also be optional. Okay, so when we define a tab as person and there are uh, name, age, and head in it, and some of them can also be optional. So let's have a try. I'm changing Hayden to each child again. And my age, okay, five, okay, sure. So what we what if we console log it? Console log uh, person. Okay, so let's have a try. Yeah, so this is what we get. So this is this is what we console log. Okay, so the tab person and we assign it value with name and then we add another one which is age. So person now have a name and an age. But we can also add more. So for example, we can have person um, hat randomly 10. <laughs> okay, so this is what we got. So we got additional hat value here. What if it's not in the person tab? Hobby. OK, so let's have a try. Person. Oops, already error message here. You can see that does not exist on tab. So we cannot do that. Good question. OK, so the key here is that um, when we define a tab, What's in it can also be optional. Yep. Uh huh. So let's repeat this question for those online. So the question is that if we do not have question mark here for age, for example, um, and we do not uh, give it a value uh, for age, what will happen? already error message here. Right, you can see that property age is missing in this tab because it's required, it's not optional. Right. Any other questions to you now? Are you all good? Cool, you can see that how strong tab strip is and how flexible it is. Okay, it's very easy to use, it's very similar to JavaScript, okay. So let's move on to the next one. Cool. This is also a very interesting example. So let's have it in the code. Yep. So now uh, we have a new tab that we define, which is called visibility. And what is following is not number or string or boolean values assigned directly to this tab. So we have private or public. 
So what it means that when we define, so for example here, for this variable, we um, declare the type as visibility. It only can have values as private or public, cannot have any other values given to visibilities, for, given to this variable. But we can have a try. Uh, so for example, I can console log, uh, create channel, and I give it a string, a visibility, uh, you can have a look at here. I can only choose from private or public as the value of that. I can give you something else, for example, B. And let's check, uh, let's practice using TSC. Okay, TSC. Yeah, this error message, something's wrong. We cannot assign the value B to this uh, tab that we define because it, the value of it can only be private or public as we define here. All good? Cool. So, <laughs> so here's a special type of tab script. It doesn't, we don't have this tab in uh, JavaScript, so it's very special, it's called any. So the name of this tab is called any. So any is a type that kind of makes tab script pointless. <laughs> but it's great for uh, something like, I will come back to it later. I do not have uh, an idea like what type I want to assign to this thing. So I can use any type. It just, I do not assign any tab to it. And tab script will also not check whether the tab is using safely. Okay. Um, so here's the example though. Okay, so here's the example. So all the variables here I get declared as any type. Okay, so let's run it and see how it looks like. Oh, TSC, you run. TS node. Oops, a lot of error messages here. Oh, the reason is that I didn't save this file. Okay, works well. So any tab works well here. Right. Um, however, any tab, uh, the any tab sometimes can cause issue because it's not tab safety. The reason that we use tab script is for tab safety. But for any, like we are not declaring any type for the variables. It's not tab safety. So sometimes when we use any type can cause issues. So the, um, the way that we check whether there's any uh, variable uh, that parameter we use in our code is uh, use any type, or we do not declare any type to it is, um, yep, it cannot find the error because any type is a lot in tab script. But sometimes we want to avoid having any type in it. So then we are going to use So we have seen something before that I said I will come back to it later, which is, oh, where is it? I promised I will come back to that. Yes, it's here. Um, is this dash dash no implicit any? Okay, so it will check uh, uh, for us if there's any used in the uh, in our code. Oops. What's going on? Yes. Oh, it's not, oh, it's because it's no implicitly any, um, but if we declare it as any, it's fine, but if we do not declare it, but we use any, there will be the problem, the issue here. Oops, <laughs> still fine, weird, right? But it's okay, but the key point is here that uh, try not to use any, but it gives us the flexibility that you can come back to it later and declare the tab that you find um, suitable. Okay, 
So this is uh, the examples of uh, TypeScript. Um, but you do not need to uh, understand all of that at this moment. Um, the reason is that um, I know it's a lot of new, although it's quite similar to JavaScript. Uh, you can learn more details when you do the practice. So this is the same as what we have learned yesterday, like continuous integration and uh, uh, the standard data interchange formats and other contents. So when you are in the labs and when you are doing the projects, you are going to practice that so you can understand those better. So for now, you just need to know like TypeScript is type safety. It helps uh, check uh, the types in our JavaScript code. Okay, it's very similar to JavaScript as well. Um, and JavaScript is not type safety. Um, yep. Sorry, your question again? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, you can't. And by the way, there's no uh, integer in TypeScript. We call it number. <laughs> yes. Cool. So here's a summary of the languages and their type safety. So C is type safety, like uh, we need to declare the tab uh, before we use the variables. And there are also uh, some optional, uh, but we still building in static uh, type safety. For example, what we have seen today, uh, type script. It's optional because we also have the any tab, right? It's not really declared, declaring any tab, so it's optional. Okay, and there are also some languages with optional external tab checkers, meaning external tab checkers is different from tab script. It check uh, not with external tab checkers, such as Python and Ruby. So uh, just for fun, like have a look at this, but it's, um, okay. So here are some uh, more that you do not need to read this. Okay, so just explaining that when you are doing your labs uh, next week and for your iteration two, uh, the environment will be set up for you. Okay, so to use TypeScript and um, like Jazz, together with Jazz, uh, there are some uh, things we need to set up. That, but you do not need to worry about. So if you are working with a local machine and something is not working well, it might be because uh, you didn't set up the environment. But for the projects and the labs, you do not need to worry about that. Okay, but if you want to play around, like you can also follow these uh, instructions and do your setups. Okay, but you do not need to worry about that. So, um, la yesterday we talked about CI and we added this script npm run test uh, in our YAML file. Um, similarly, we can also have npm run TSC to do the testing for us. So, this is doing the static uh, verification for you automatically when you commit something. Okay, in GitLab, uh, the CS service will do this for you. Okay, automatically check that for you. Yes, again, <laughs> don't stress. Uh, I mentioned this quite a lot of time, so do not stress. Uh, at a first glance, there may be a lot of new information, but actually, uh, you do not need to get everything today after this lecture. You are going to practice with that, you are going to use that, and then you uh, get better understanding of tab 3 uh, very soon. Okay? Um, yeah, and also we do not expect you uh, to set up the environment yourself. We set up everything for you. Okay? Yeah, um, now is the first part of today's lecture. Uh, ha it would be great to have your feedback. So for example, yesterday we got some feedback. Uh, the YouTube recording quality, so we need to have a higher quality. So we do that. So we did that this morning. And we also get some feedback uh, to interact with the chat uh, better. So we have an admin working the chat. Um, so yeah, so we do act on your feedback. So if you have anything, please put in this feedback form. It's anonymous, so feel free to do so. We, we do act on your feedback.
So we, are, we really appreciate your feedback as well. So have a break. Uh, it's now 3.05. We'll come back at 3.15. Okay, thank you.
Okay, um, welcome back. So um, this will be our second part for today's lecture. Um, it will be a lot more easier, I think, and more straightforward. Uh, so it's also about practice. It's also about, uh, it's relevant to static verification. So what it link, so what we are trying to do is still uh, check our code before we run it. Okay, so this is, uh, so we can't manually fix our style for our, so linting is about uh, our code style. So for example, um, if you have too many black space somewhere, you ha if you have a super long line in your code, it's not easy to read, uh, right? And it's also not easy, uh, it also makes us hard to find potential errors. So the style does matter. So this lecture will be about our coding style. Okay, so we are going to uh, introduce um, some concept called linting and also some tool to help us with our code style. Okay, so, so this is similar to what we had uh, talked about earlier, like uh, we do JS test to test our code uh, for us although dynamically, and we also uh, had uh, static verification that we talked a, a little bit earlier that automatically test our uh, tabs for us. So the key point is here, um, if we want to have, uh, so as a self-engineering, self-engineer, uh, or as a team or group or organization of software engineers. We want to scale the process. We want to make things easier for us, right? So we want to do the check or the test uh, automatically for us. Okay, so yeah, coding style. So this is super, super important. Although like many of us do not pay much attention to that. We may pay more attention to the syntax, pay more attention to the algorithm, to the logic. However, the style, the coding style is also, also very, very important. Like uh, when I was working as a tutor for uh, database system course 3311, uh, I was marking the assignment and <laughs> I usually saw like horrible code. Like although the, the code passed um, auto testing, um, but it's really hard to read. And also there are sometimes uh, the auto test uh, returns some errors. And I was trying to read that code and figure out why and how to help the students solve that issue. <laughs> Sometimes the code is really, really hard to read. So when you are coding, do remember the style. It's very important, it's especially when you are working in a team. Okay. And or you are um, publishing your code, your project somewhere uh, on website or NPM or whatever. Like, if your code is easy to read, it's easier for others to use and to build on and to help you solve your bugs. Okay, so the coding style is so important. Like, as the codes here, like programs must be written for people to read and only incidentally for machines to ask you. Okay, so why do we care about style? So first of all, it's easier to follow the flow of code with consistent web space. Right, it's just very easy to follow. And it's easier to visually glance at code with similar patterns. So for example, we may have um, something like all the functions have a start with uppercase letters. And all the variables are lowercase or just an example, just be consistent. So consistency helps us um, to visually glance at the code. Okay, and it can also be easier to detect bugs. Okay, if your code is like uh, crunching together, it's really hard to detect bugs. So here are some examples um, which are bad and good codes. Looks very similar though. <laughs> Yeah, but um, you can see that at the left hand side, uh, for example, the D here, we need, perhaps we need to have a, lot of, a little bit more space before that, okay? And also for four, um, yeah, the style is, 
But the key is be consistent. So if you have some uh, in um, what, uh, like um, four spaces here, it's better to be uh, consistent in your code. So who decides on styles? So who decides on styles? Uh, any guess? What do you think? Hmm? <laughs> Um, so it, it really depends, actually. So for example, when you are learning at university in your courses, uh, the course may have some uh, structure or style defined for you that you just need to follow that. Okay. And uh, when you are leaving university, when you are working in your organization, your organization may have a standard style that you need to follow. Okay. But there are also some um, Style guides set by some large organizations such as Google or Facebook or Microsoft. Okay, so in Comp 1531 in this code, uh, we use standard style guides, and we also provide them to you. Okay, so here, so this is um, so Linta. What is Linta? It helps us enforcing our styles. Okay, so we want to uh, scale. Uh, How are students online? Are you stuck? No? All good? Okay, cool. So, um, in some computing courses such as this one, uh, we provide you with a style guide. And also in your following courses next year or later this year, in the courses, um, more often we will provide you a style guide. Otherwise, they will just remind you to be consistent in your projects. Okay, and uh, more often, like we are um, just make sure um, that yeah, consistency is very important. However, in um, when you want to scale, like when you want to do something at a scale, you want to have those tasks automatically uh, done for you, so you do not need to worry about that. And those services, it would be great that they can help you uh, fix those uh, styles. Okay, so this is why we introduce uh, linter. It helps us lint our code. So we call programs that lint code as linters. Okay, so you can also consider it as a way of static verification. So what does a linter do? Um, yeah, in the slide you can see a very quick uh, recap. So. Static verification is the processing of analyzing as much of your program as you can before running it. Okay, um, so Linta does a static analysis for us. It deals with stale issues. Okay, and it also deals with some semantic issues. So linting, however, linting does not help with uh, our point. Uh, named variables such as A and B or C it does not have any semantic information in it. So linter will not help with that. So you, you still need to manually make sure that your names of your variables uh, have some semantic information. It's still up to us. Um, yeah, so now we are going to introduce a tool to help us with our style. It's called as, uh, ESLint. So this is a very popular tool for statically analyzing JavaScript code. Okay, it can help us detect errors and also warn of potential errors, potential, and check against uh, our con uh, conventions. So there are some standard uh, styles, code styles, some conventions. Okay, it can also automatically fix issues with your styles. Wow, that would be great, right? It can automatically help you. We are going to show you how. Okay, it can be configured uh, configured to be as uh, strict or not strict as you want it to be. Okay, sounds great. So now let's uh, install as ESLint. It's pretty similar as what we did earlier with TypeScript, right? So it's also a library, uh, a pr um, something that we can uh, get from NPM. It's called ESLint. Yes, it's here. You can still see that it's very, very popular, right? 
Okay, so let's try uh, install it. So how? I will do it here. Great, very quickly then. Okay, so ESLink determines uh, what is and isn't okay um, by looking at this file. Okay, so there's a hidden file called .eslink. Uh, so let me show you. It's here. Like I didn't have that before, but after that, after I installed uh, that package from npm, I got this hidden file, and it looks like this. Right. So because I have installed this before, um, but um, on my laptop. But if you want to. Uh, have that on your laptop. There are some um, steps that you need to um, follow. But in our course, same, in your labs or your projects, you do not need to worry about that. Everything is set up for you. Okay, you only need to know how to use that to help you with your code style. Okay, no stress again. We make things, we are trying to make things easier for you, like Hayden, the previous uh, course, um, Convenient and the teaching team that that means did a lot of uh, put a lot of effort on that. Okay, um, so this is how we use ESLint. Is let us try. So first, I need to have a JavaScript in a bad coding style. Uh, it's here. <laughs> Look at this code. Okay, so let's try and see what happens. So it's very similar as what we used before for... Okay, so let's have a try. Oops, so many errors. <laughs> and all of these errors are about coding style. So let's have a look. So for example, the first one, missing space. The second one is a space is required. The third one, missing space. Extra semicolons, extra semicolon, and expected uh, indentations. Um, yeah, so it helps you check your code. So let's try to fix some of the style issues here. So for example, missing space before function. So is it here? I add a space here. And I run this ESLint command again. Yeah, the first error is solved. Okay, and it also be very easy to use that it shows you where the error is. So for example, this first one is in the second line. It's in the, this line here. It says a space is required after this comma. So I add a comma here and I save this file and I check again. Okay, one more error solved. So it's very um, clear and very easy to use. It helps you check all the stale errors in your code. Okay. If nothing prints on the terminal, your file is all good, meaning that um, it's it's good. Like your code still is good. Some uh, semantic issues need to be fixed manually, um, but stale issues can be fixed. Okay. So how can we automatically fixing the stale issues? Okay, so we add this dash dash fix flag. Let's try that and see how it looks like. Oh, look at my code again. Looks better. <laughs> Magic. Um, this is how it looks like before. Okay, let's let me make it more straightforward for you. So you can see the change. So what? I, so this is the bad code style, right? So I run this fixed command, oops, this fixed command here. Look at the code. Automatically fix all those style issues. Wow. <laughs> this is what, I, what we want, right? 
Okay, very straightforward and very easy to use. It overrides the file. It doesn't create a new file for you. It just overrides your file. Okay. And um, sometimes we want to ignore the issues, the cell issues. We do not want uh, that ESLint to solve some of the issues for us for some reason sometimes. So there are some ESLint disabling rules guide here. So you can also find this link uh, on your slide. So there are some rules here. So uh, let us try this one, perhaps, and see what happens. <coughs> so I put this here. Oh, be before we do that, we need to go back to the bad stuff. OK, I put this line here. And when I run this fix command, <laughs> ESLink enable. OK. Uh, so there's also other ones that disable uh, ESLink. For example, this one. So what I'm going to do, go back to this bad style and put ESLink disable here. And I run the fix command. Nothing changed. It disabled the ES link. So if you have a file uh, that you do not want ES link to change your styles, change anything, you can put this line here. It won't check this code for any styling issues. Okay. So what if I want to uh, fix all the styling issues except a special uh, specific line? What should we do? So there are also something that we can use. Um, this one, disable next line. OK, so what we do is uh, we remove this one, and we put this line here, yes link, disable next line. And we try. All the other lines have been fixed, except this one. It's very, very useful. Yep. Yes, you are right. It would be better. However, um, yes, link can do most of the things for us, but it cannot do all. Yeah. But it's already fixed most of the issues for us, right? It looks much, 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 much better. OK, so this is how we use that. OK, so another note that in COMP1531, we only allow the use of a few ES link disabled next line per project. You cannot ignore all the spelling issues in your project, right? OK, so to make it easier, like what we done before, we can also add these scripts to your JSON file, so package JSON file, so here. What it does is uh, it checks all the files in the folder, in this folder. So for example, uh, let us add this to our package JSON file. Oh, I already added here. So it's the use of uh, this is very similar to what we used for TSC and TS no before. Uh, but we can have a try and see how it works. So what we want is npm run uh, linked. Oops. <laughs> so all the errors, styling issues here. OK, uh, it checks my style code, uh, our code for the previous lecture, uh, 3.3. It checks all the files in, that, in my folder. OK, um, yeah, so what if I only want to check a specific file? So for example, npm run linked, uh, 3.4 style. Bad JS. 
I still check everything for you. The reason is that what we put here is that we ask them to check all the files and our vs.js in the folder. Okay, but you can make changes to it. But this is what we use in this course. Okay, so if there's any specific file that you do not want ESLink to check for you or fix for you, you can put uh, the disabled line um, in your file. Okay, very, very easy to use, very straightforward and very useful. And you can also use that in your project as what we use. Uh, we can put that in our YAML file, the continuous integration file that we talked about yesterday. Right? We, we put our uh, JS test, we put our TSC tag, and uh, we now can also add our link to it, to the YAML file. Okay? But uh, same, in our projects, uh, we do this for you. Okay? Yeah, again, <laughs> no stress. ESLink will be part of a labs from week four, which is next week. Okay, so um, most of the time, all the labs are about uh, the lecture from the previous week. Okay, and what we are talking about this week will start to uh, be part of your labs from next week, and also iteration two, starting from week five. Okay, so no stress, you still have time. Um, we will give you both the configuration file and uh, the link command to your package.json file. So we do this for you. Um, ESLink will be part of your project from iteration two, which starts from week five again. Um, we will set up everything for you. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I didn't make any um, so all I did was npm install this, okay, and um, est link uh, init a command. But you do not need to do that. And you can also do that with jest, use uh, es link with jest, but you need to do additional setup if you want to work locally uh, instead of in comp 1531 for the, the repo, okay? No need to worry about that, just some instructions that you do not need to follow. <laughs> Don't stress, again. So feel relaxed. Okay, cool. So this part is a lot more easy, right? Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. <laughs> Great, so um, it's very sad that Rob can't make it today. Uh, we're really looking forward to have Rob. So Rob is the, um, so Rob will come back next Wednesday. Yay, this is the good news, <laughs> finally. So if you have any questions for Rob, uh, feel free to put in the forum, okay? And you can also ask him in person next week. Um, yeah, uh, let me have a look at the chat. Yeah, they're asking about the setup, but you do not need to worry about that. Okay, so before we wrap up, uh, before we finish, let's have a quick recap of what we have talked about today. Okay, so everything we talk about today is about static verification. So the reason that we want to have static verification is that we want to know if there's any error before we run that code. Okay, so we can run the code and compare the output uh, with your expected output with uh, JS testing. It's good, uh, but it's not that uh, safe or friendly with your memory and everything. So, and sometimes we can't even get an error message when we do the JS uh, testing. So that's why we introduced the static uh, verification. And there are two parts of the static verification that we talk about today. So the first one is type safety. So JavaScript is a great language. However, it's not type safety because we do not declare the uh, type for uh, the variables or parameters uh, in our JavaScript code. So it's not type safety. To help with the type safety, we introduced type script. And TypeScript is a very, very uh, similar language that built on top of JavaScript. Okay, so we, uh, we have seen a lot of examples today, uh, but you do not, again, you do not need to 
uh, understand all of them today. Okay, so it just show you how similar, how power, how similar TypeScript is to JavaScript, and how powerful it is, and how simple uh, to use, and how it helps us to check our tabs. Okay, so um, <clears throat> there's much there's um, and the theory, the theoretical thing behind TypeScript is that it check your tab in your TypeScript file, and then it. Trans, um, make a new JavaScript uh, file based on your TypeScript file and note that JavaScript file. So it's still run, running very similarly. It just add an extra step to check your tabs. Okay, so this is TypeScript. And the second part of our today's lecture is about uh, linked, uh, linking or ES linked. So the reason behind that is uh, style is so important but often ignored <laughs> which is not good so uh, we want to emphasize the importance of uh, your style like your coding style okay and in addition to that uh, we also introduced a tool called ESLink to help you check your coding style for you automatically and even fix your coding style for you Okay, which is great. So we want help them uh, to help you scale your software engineering career, no career, projects perhaps, or process. Um, yeah, and you can always add those tests, like in addition to the JS tests, uh, we can have uh, tab, uh, tab script compared like TSA file, uh, scripts in your uh, pack, uh, pack, package.json file, and we can also add our linting uh, the check for your uh, coding style to your uh, package.json file. Okay, so the continuous configuration tools on your GitLab service will help you automatically check all of these. Okay, so sometimes you may feel, well, uh, I need to be more careful about the, the style, I need to be more careful about the tags, but it's for your good, for your good. Right? So, yeah, but you want to write good quality code, right? You want to have good quality projects, and these extra things uh, for testing, for practice, is as important as your, um, like the other part of your code, like the functions that you define. It's as important as those. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. We finished a little bit earlier today. <laughs> uh, so if you have any questions, feel free uh, to stay and I will have you. And there are some things that um, we tried but didn't. So if you have any extra uh, questions, you can also put it on the forum. That uh, We have more than 200 queries on the forum, which is great. Like You are being very active as a very active learner, which is great. Um, if you have any issue with your projects or your labs, uh, you can always reach out to your tutors and your lab assistant. You can also go to our help sessions. So we have scheduled a lot of help sessions each week. So feel free to use them, make good use of those help sessions. So if there's any issue that your tutors or um, those in the help session cannot help you with, uh, you can email us. Okay. Oh, one more thing is that we have some students with uh, ELP. Uh, some of them have reached out to us, but some haven't. So if you have an ELP, uh, please reach out to us and we can discuss how we can help you, how we can support you. Uh, the last thing is uh, feedback. <laughs> feedback is so important to us and also I think it's also important for you. Uh, we always work on your feedback, always. Okay, so we, we improve every week. Uh, to meet your learning needs. Okay, all good. Thank you so much. Hey, hello. Sorry, I just mute my online.